Um, today we're going to talk about um, the different kind of personalities of the dogs, and I'm going to show by example how the dogs interact with each other. Um, and many people think that dogs should just automatically be able to go in and get together and all have a good time. Well, they don't do that any more than we do. The seven groups of dogs really have like individuals that, that have some similarities in the way they think, kind of lumped together. It stands to reason if we don't get along with everybody because our temperaments and personalities vary, um, so do the dogs. Now, this, uh, this graphic up here, this banner, is kind of my perception of how dogs think. When I start to train one, I look at where that dog fits into this, what mixture of personalities. And no dog basically is a purebred. They all come down from wolves, which means all of them possess each and every one of these tendencies. It's just they're, they've been bred to possess you know, predictable um, list of them. So anyway, what you'll see in here, working, in a corporation, if this were that type of personality, this would be security and maintenance. Big jobs. Oftentimes not a big sense of humor. Um, serious, stay on task, and get the big jobs done. Terriers, the executive group. They take charge, they deal with challenges, they maintain control, they run the company. The hard thing about terriers is if, they, if you don't run the company, they will. Financial. Chief financial advisor. Now this is the guy that keeps track of details, keeps everything on track. He doesn't let things go astray. He's got all the, from bean counter on up to totally controlling everything. He's a director. He's not a leader. He's a manager. He focuses on details and he implements plans. What breed is that? This would be the herding group. Okay. And they're all different levels, so you start from the, there's a toy faction of each of the groups, and there's the big tough version of each one of the groups. So when you get into the cocker, um, here, you'll see Jake is a toy, a toy sporting dog. Okay. The sporting, sales and marketing, we laugh about that. He has kind of a limited set of values. The rest of them, um, safety and security is their big thing. In the, in the sporting dogs, not all of them, but in many of them, they live for food, fun, and attention. That's why they do so well with food motivation. Um, unfortunately, it can get them into trouble. <coughs> Excuse me. Toy. They're the receptionist in the corporation. They greet people and tell them where to go. They monitor everything. And as long as you tell them how cute they are and how well-dressed they are and how nice their hair looks and their nails are done, they're happy. Non-sporting. <coughs> Quality control, union rep. Kind of a micromanager. They're great at telling you what you've done wrong. Not what you've done right. What you've done wrong. Where you're lacking. What you need to do. What you should have done. What, you, what you've been thinking about a year ago. Skippy's perfect. The hounds. They're like a peace worker in a factory. They stay focused, they stay on task, and don't bother them. They're very single-minded, so they get their mind on something. It's hard to get them to turn off. So we don't have a hound here today, but we have good representation of all these other groups. It's pretty funny to see them work. You'll see the executive in action. <coughs> You'll see Jake, the little shoe salesman, going around trying to sell everybody a pair of shoes. Nobody wants his pair of shoes, but he keeps trying. You'll see Otis. He's only 10 weeks old. Otis knows kind of what to do, but he's got some education yet. We've got a number of executives in here, all different levels. We got Z, 
She definitely is in charge of details, and she won't let you bother her. She is the chief financial officer. We've got Roy. Roy believes he is very cute, and he is. And Skippy. So, this is kind of my perception. When you add to this the age of the dog and some of the experiences, this chart right here predictably tells you how that dog should be handled. And if you can match a person to the behavior of that dog, you know how to handle that person as well. So, Conditioning. We've talked about um, making sure the dogs all understand all the stuff. Well, the fact of the matter is, the dogs already do understand it. It's us that needs to learn. So what we've done today is we've come to the daycare. We've come to the play day. We've come to the dog park. And we have a whole group of little cute dogs. The only one that's not little and cute is Z, but she comes to the dog park anyway, right? Because yeah. we like to see her play with other dogs. Well, the problem with it is that every dog thinks so differently. A lot of people argue about that, but I think you'll be able to see in this little video kind of how it works. We have all the different groups represented here except one. We have the working dog, which wherever the heck he went, he's over here, the Great Dane. He's 10 weeks old. He knows how to be a Great Dane, but he certainly doesn't understand how to deal with the rest of them. And we're not going to stop this. This is the real behavior. I'll stop it in a little bit. Okay. Now, even though Otis is bred to take over, he starts out as a little puppy, and he needs to learn to fit in appropriately to dogs. We've got Jake, the cocker, sporting dog. Kind of like a salesman. He tries to talk you into things you don't necessarily need or want or can afford. But that's Jake. The game is just nothing but fun. Life is fun. He really doesn't want to be serious unless he absolutely has to. Now, we have Ella. Ella's a five-month-old Lakeland Terrier. She's young. She's not all that much older than All right. You behave yourself, old woman. We have Z. Z is nine years old. She is a herder, which means she's bred to keep order in the herd or the flock and control their nonsense. She doesn't want to play with them. She doesn't want to do anything except keep them under control so that the flock and the shepherd are safe. So we're back to Ella. Terriers are kind of the executives of the pack. They move in, figure out where they fit in, and then take over. They'll take that rank, and then as the opportunity arises, they'll move up the pack. We have Skippy. Skippy's a non-sporting dog. He's kind of the micromanager, kind of the control freak of the bunch. He really doesn't want to leave, but he certainly will tell you what you're doing wrong. And that's really what he does. Now you notice how everything, now don't pet them. Do not pet them. Okay? Otherwise she'll stay over there and won't go to work. Now, we have Roy. Roy is a toy. He's over in the kennel over there. Roy is a diminished little guy. He's a receptionist in the company. He is bred to greet everybody and tell them where to go. 
That's what toys do. But toy, Roy has been taught, or he's been allowed to learn, that he really doesn't have the physical ability to back up anything he says. So Roy said, I don't want to play with the big boys because they boss me. This would be the receptionist that doesn't really want to go into the factory and deal with the big guys. So what we have here is a group of kids. They all think differently. They're all true to their breeds. And you're going to see the kids with confidence, the kids without confidence, the kids that take charge. Now, it's kind of sad to see Otis not out there playing, isn't it? No, it's not. Now, why isn't it sad for Otis not to be playing? Because at his weight, he outweighs everything except Z. Now, if he's allowed to pick on the smaller dogs, What's he going to grow up to be? A bully. So by him learning that he's not the toughest guy in the sky, he has a good, healthy respect for smaller dogs. That enables you to go into places that have smaller dogs. Nobody hurt him. He just told him to straighten up and act like a great dame. Don't act like them silly, silly little crazy dogs. Now, even Ella toned down when Z set the stage. So if we want all-out play, we would have to take away anything that controls. Now, if we left it up to Jake, everybody would run around and play and have a good time. But it wouldn't be safe. All it would be is play. And the toughest dog would be the leader. This dog really doesn't, she's not playing, she's practicing control, practicing leadership, practicing learning how to deal with. Now look at Otis. He wants to play, but he wants to play like a Great Dane. So if he plays like a Great Dane, he's going to hurt somebody, including you. So is it sad? Look at that. That is respect. Not fear. Good boy, Otis. Now, as he grows, it's not even going to be healthy for him to go romping with crazy dogs. Because his bones need a chance to grow and develop. He already knows how to play. He's a controlling dog, too. So he's got to learn not to control everybody. Now, the only thing that needs to be added to this is when he's being appropriate, you're going to tell him, good boy, Otis. When he's getting a little over the top, you're going to say, easy, Otis. Good boy. Good, easy, Otis. See? So in this way, the training that you do carries over. As long as he's dragging the line, he knows what you're talking about, and he, know, he believes that you can back it up. So he can go out as he grows up and safely play with toys and with, with little sporting dogs, with small dogs. Now, Annie is how old, Nancy? So two. She's two. All right. So if you're 30 years old, is it appropriate for a 15-year-old little kid to be telling you what to do? No. And she just told Ellie that Ella that. Ella's a kid. She's come into this play group. She wants to tell the world how to run and how it runs and what who's in charge. Now what Otis is learning right here is he can challenge authority respectfully. Not be over the top and and you're fine, Kylie. Good girl. All right, Sue, I want you to move away from the wall. Just get up and walk. You can come over here by me if you want to. Good dog. Now, Kylie is the dog that has had a history. Okay, come into the center, though, because she's kind of sticking with you, which is the smart thing to do. You are her security. Good girl, Kylie. 
Okay. This dog has been, um, she was almost killed by another dog. So why wouldn't she be afraid to be in a group? She needs you to tell her she's fine. Good girl. So when there's order and harmony, girl, we teach kind. her that she is safe. See. We can't avoid the situation. We've got to allow her to explore and feel safe. Good girl. There you go. Good girl. There you go. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. Nobody's going to save you except you. Good girl. We have to teach her to make decisions not pick her up and prevent her from having to deal with it. Good girl. Hi. Good girl. Because only in dealing with it can she gain confidence. Good girl. Only Good in overcoming, finding a resolution to it. Just stand up. Stand up. Good dog. Good girl, Sarah. You're fine. Easy. Now, she's doing the right thing. She's coming to a human being for security. Tidy. Easy. Otis is doing what a Great Dane should do. Not tear into that puppy, but correct her appropriately. Now, if all he played with is that terrier, he'd get tougher and tougher because she wouldn't give in. <laughs> so both of them, she's learning to not fear bigger dogs, He's learning to be appropriate. Easy. Good dog. Now, if they grow up appropriate like this, when you bring them to a group of dogs that are working, the dog won't cling to you, fearing what could happen. He knows what would happen. Okay. Now, you know, what you just saw was a little smidge of dogs being their natural selves. And so it continues. The Terriers, fun-loving, game players, figure out they like challenges. Rooms are bigger than you are, so you have to be able to drag it around. They want control. They want to, they want to, strategy games are just really special. Alright. Now I talk a lot about in order to be seen as a pack leader in the dog's eyes, you have to not only supply their values, but also control them. Their whole list of values are food, fun, attention, comfort, safety. If all you do is supply those values, you're just supplying them. You actually are bringing homage to the pack leader. If you also control those values, you have a dog that's dependent on you. Because the only difference between wild and domestic is dependency. So when you take advantage of the fact they need you to supply their values, and then you also take the time to control them, automatically you have a dog that looks at you and says, I need you around to fill the food bowl. I need you around to play. I need you around for attention. I need you around to give me comfort. I need you around to keep me safe. And that's exactly what Kylie's doing. That's beautiful. Oh, Bring him in. Let, it, let the lead go. Just drop it. OK, now walk out of the doorway. Get out of that congested area. Oh, boy. Okay. Now, Buddy's the big kid. He's a big sixth grader. He's coming to join the daycare, right? He wants to play. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, Buddy. <coughs> now, what are the rest of us supposed to do? Mr. Obnoxicon. 
Good boy. Good boy. So when we take dogs out and let them interact, it's very much like children. There's no way you can have a kid like that play with a dog. Oh, you're Skippy's trying to tell him, but all he does is bosses. Oh boy. <laughs> Now, even if there was leadership in here, how could you be the leader with a big guy like that totally ignoring you? You couldn't. Okay, see? You're on. No, this is the way it goes. Well, we're just... We don't want to disrupt. We've had a couple of interruptions. And... Good boy! Roy! Right. Knock it off. Now, what happens if somebody's kind of been bullied? They want to bully. Look at that. Look at that toy. Roy, stop it. Now, you leave him alone. Bossy brat. Okay. Come on in and park. We can't walk. Yeah, we've got to really... There you go. I don't know. I can't believe it. Oh, I got a nail by a bird. Yeah. Alright, just empty. Because anytime there's activity, everybody's attention yeah. goes. Yeah. Alright. Here, guys. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, it's food, buddy. Oh, man. Which is it going to be, fun or food? I don't know. They're both very important. They like attention, too. Here you go, guys. Come find it. Oh boy, Buddy found the food. <laughs> buddy got all the food. Buddy liked the food. Food is a value, certainly. They need food to survive. You're fine. Oh boy. Now don't pet the dogs. Don't pet Z. No. Come here, Z. Come here, guys. Do I go be a brat? Hunt it up, Z. Hunt it up. You so. You so. Z isn't going to push him. Now, Z is getting older. Now, what could they do with Buddy in a group like this? Nothing. He would, because... He's the strongest and most agile. Buddy, leave it. He could not be controlled in this group. So our job is to then lower Buddy's attitude so he plays appropriately, or he will kick it all up to a notch that suits him. Two choices. Ella's trying to correct it. Will be boss and be banging Yeah, but she knows what's right. She just doesn't know what to do. It isn't that much like us. We know what's right. We just don't know what to do about it. In that case, Buddy comes in, kind of dictates what goes on. We don't want to call attention to ourselves, and we don't know what to do. And so he just does what he wants to. And, and Buddy's being actually, actually very good. And that's because he has weight on him. That just tones him down. Good. Hey, bud. And I'm so glad you're here, because that is exactly the point of this lesson. It's not up to that dog what, you know, happens. It's up to you what happens. So if you allowed Buddy to just come in here and rip and tear, he's got weight on, and that's why he's come in here. And he's absolutely appropriate. Absolutely. Brandy's absolutely appropriate. But if we were to take that weight off, and he wasn't trained, he would have a good time with everybody in here. Now, you notice who else is now coming out is Otis. 
all that time that all that activity was going on, Otis sat over by his mom. He said, Julie, protect me. Kylie's right there by Sue. That's not because you're holding her. That's because she chooses to be there. That is a huge compliment that the dog wants to come to you and lay there and do as it should rather than what it enjoys. <laughs> hey, now that's enough. That would in no way be a relationship you'd want to continue. Because as Otis grows up, he's going to play like a great game. And Roy is saying, bring it on. Well, Roy's not smart enough to know that one day, Otis will bring it on. You little monkey. I. Good. Because what, what Roy is teaching him, Otis is now trying to practice on other dogs. It's not healthy for the Great Dane to wrestle with dogs, especially like a golden that, or a lab or something that is much more agile. Now, a Great Dane is agile if you're going straight, but the lab and the golden, they slam. You'll hurt that dog. But if he learns to play with that, that's how he plays with the other kids. A Great Dane shouldn't spend his time ripping and tearing around your yard because it's not good on his development. It'll break down his joints and it'll injure his legs. He, to hold up all that weight, he doesn't even have solid bone yet. His bones are all gray. So if he exercises too much, he's going to break down when he gets older. So he's best to learn to be well-behaved and calm. Now, it's really funny because in here, we don't put the emphasis on food. I threw food, and there were some dogs that came and got it. But really, truly, food is not a top priority. Security and safety are. Otis, you're fine. Otis, leave him alone. Otis, leave him. Now pick up the lead. Give him a little pop. Roy, you back off. Roy. Leave it. Leave it. Roy. You are five. Now, if you had a bunch of kids together, is this not what you would do? Of course it is. Each individual needs to play. Now, you need to prove to Kylie that she's safe. No, take Otis out of there. Kylie's doing fine. Otis, your big cow. Send him back to his mother. You know how those obnoxious kids are. Easy. Good, easy. Yeah. The Lakeland likes control. That's pretty much perfect interaction. Real tiny. Fine. Good for real. Pretty easy. Drag him off. Now this is getting Otis over being spooky on the lead. This is getting her focused on something other than wrestling with him. You don't want her wrestling with big dogs either. You want her to play appropriately. So if we allow her to play unchecked with every dog that comes along, we have a real problem. Good girl. Good girl. Now, who's the leader in this group? Huh? Who's the leader in this group? Who's leading this pack? Annie? No. I am. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's not a leader in here. There is not a leader in here. We've got puppies. We've got worried individuals. We've got salesmen who really don't want to lead. They just want all the food to themselves. We've got micromanager here who just wants to boss everybody. He doesn't want to lead. He wants to boss. We've got Z who just wants them all to leave her alone. We don't have a leader in here. 
Well, actually, a male Lakeland would be too much dog. Because in order to really be the leader, he would have to be above the big dogs. So we need one that has leadership abilities, but absolutely understands leadership. They also understand that there are those above, too. So the real pack leader wouldn't deal with any of these. As Kylie, the real pack leader, would look at that as fast food and, you know, that's not worth bothering with. Jake, a real pack leader, would kick him out of the group because he's really not contributing anything. A real pack leader would have a problem with her, but she doesn't want to be part of the pack. She wants to be off to the side. You'd see some real power struggles. No, he's fine. That's teaching him. You're fine, Otis. Now, he went out there with the feeling he was going to kind of take down somebody, wasn't he? He kind of got over that. Okay, so it's kind of harmless kind of lessons that he went out to play with the big boys, and then all of a sudden he decided he was not such a big boy after all. <laughs> now, in reality, Otis is only 10 weeks old. She's five months so we've got that 15-year-old kid, and then we've got this kid in grade school. Big difference. Okay, I'm going to go get me a leader. New kid comes in. Okay. What happens when you take over a company? Now, we're not in daycare anymore. We're up to... Company. This is employee. Now you straighten up. I am going to tone her down just a bit because if you had a company with this much chaos, you'd have to come in and clean house. She'd probably fire them all because she would be too strong. Would she do what was needed? Yes, she would. Would she do it a little tougher than what she? Yeah. So we have to protect everybody in the pack, not just one, not just the one we like. It's got to be everybody in your company or your pack has to be safe. She can still do her job. There is no blood, it's noise. The last thing Gadget wants is for any of her pack members to be injured so they can't contribute. Now she's doing an assessment of the pack. She's dealing with the higher ranking members first. Emma, Ella has absolute ability, good girl, See? He's perfectly respectful. She's not going to bother with him at all. As long as the employees are respectful and doing their job, life is good. She can't figure out why he's such a puppy and why he's so big. That's just not right. Good girl, Gadget. You bet. This is so good. They need to see leadership if they're going to be leaders. Good girl. Good girl. Yeah, she's got to take a few fingerprints. Do an interview. Look at Otis. Yeah, look at Skippy. He said, I think I'll go back to my office now. Well, that's exactly right. It's exactly what it is. So when you have a leader... It's going to be determined by the size and the ability and some attitude. But he came in, and he certainly could have been the leader, but he's not a leader. He's a play guy. This is a leader. Now, she would be a little strong for a lot of them. Got 
Got to check them all out. She works right on down the pack rather than, now he is getting acquainted from the pack on the bottom on up. Gadget is dealing with it from the top on down. So the insignificant guys, and that sounds terrible, but look at that salesman push the boss. I beg your pardon. I told you I didn't need any of those. I told you get that expense report in on time. I told you get back to your office and get your reports done. Instead of walking around the company bugging everybody. That puppy you can see, that was the first one Gadget dealt with, that puppy has got a lot of ability. You can just see it oozing out of her. Not afraid to take on that great day. Not afraid to step up to everybody in a nice way. Now look at where the little toy receptionist went. Back to her office where she belongs. She's been, or he's been wiggling around this office for too long. Gadget is certainly not playing. She takes control very seriously. This is a beautiful thing. Because when you have a dog that understands leadership, you can manage a whole group of dogs, and you can sit on the box here, and she can do the work for you. Because once you've established what the rules are in your top dog, they reinforce your rules, not just make up their own. This is where when you had the other Great Danes, you didn't have one that really had a good handle on what you actually wanted. And so you had three of them or even four at a time that were nice, but they were all, you know, they got a little worried and all that stuff. What a cute dog. Being up high is a privilege. So you'll see them have a little struggle with that, probably. Watch your camera. Yeah. See, Gadget wants her to make sure that Ella stays down just a little bit. Ella actually needs to come down a little bit because we were talking about that. When she goes back home, she's gonna, she's got some potential. Gadget just did a huge favor because at five months old, she has no business thinking about running that company. Had to be done in the right way. You couldn't let Gadget go up there full-blown growling and snarling and go after her because you'd have made an example out of her. We don't want that. Gadget's approachable, even to that silly toy. But her job is to run the company. It, I mean, it's phenomenal. Look at Kylie. She's absolutely, she knows she's safe over there. Otis knows he's safe over there. Buddy's sticking pretty close to safety as well. Z said, please don't let them bother me. I'll have to do something. Now we can dote on the leader just a little bit, but if we make a big deal about lesser guys, she will put them back down where they belong. So you wouldn't go in and raise some of the other ones up above her because she would make sure they knew where they were in the food chain. I'll get you. Are you an excellent dog? You are. Good job. Now Gadget's just a little over two years old. She started out as the low man on the totem pole. She knows what it's like to be in the mail room. She's learning what it's like. Now she's above Buddy, isn't she? Because it's, it's a big deal to take down somebody that's four times your size. Hey, you don't have to be grouchy. <laughs> now, do you think she has no fear walking in like this? No. She has fear. Z could hurt her, couldn't she? Buddy could hurt her. Randy could hurt her. Otis is bigger than she is. The two Lakelands could come together and hurt her. Three Lakelands. But because of her responsibility to be the leader, you shake when you're done, don't you? You run a business. You shake when you're done. You deal with what comes in the door. 
with confidence, assertiveness, and then you shake when the, it's all over with. Any club you're involved in, any group you're involved in, it's the same way. If you have any authority, there's always those below you that are kind of waiting to put you in your place. Even if they don't want to do it, Now, she's going to get in trouble if she won't stop. The boss has the right to approach you, and you should not walk away from the boss, should you? Now, you can't avoid situations, Kylie. You've got to learn to stand up and deal with them like an adult. Gadget's teaching. She's not, she can hurt that puppy. She don't want to hurt that puppy. She wants that puppy to do what she wants. She's communicating. That's the patience of a good leader. She's already got her respect. Isn't that cool? So as corporate, it's my responsibility to step back and allow Gadget because I've designated her as leader. It's my responsibility to step back, let her make some decisions with supervision. If she gets a little over the top, which she started to, I backed her off. That's my job. She's setting her up to commit a bigger crime so she's got something worth correcting. She's not gonna correct the little stuff. She wants this puppy to be respectfully disobedient. She wants this puppy to not be afraid to question and test. Every member has the right to. But she's keeping her eye on her. Okay, good girl. Oh, now you bumped your leg. Get it? Gadget, you're fine. Good girl. She's fine. You're fine. Come here. I know. I know. You're fine. You're fine. Look at that boy. Now, what's a better combination than a salesman and the receptionist? She needs to know your concerns. Probably slipped. I think she did. I did something good. Good girl. I want her to know your concerns. Good girl, Annie. Are you an excellent dog? You are. You have the right to approach corporate, don't you? Yes, you do. You are a good girl. Anyway, any questions, complaints, concerns? The puppy is fine. Um, yeah, the puppy got an owie and kind of overreacted. There was nothing wrong with the puppy. Little kid. Oh, come on, you're fine. But they're just like kids. Kids and dogs are very, very kids and puppies, very similar to Ray's. Yeah, she's, but she's operating a little less out in the middle. She's, and she needs that. Now, Gadget didn't take it out of her. She just put it on hold a while, and that's the way it should be. Uh, she's resilient. Sure she is. But if we allow that puppy to do nothing but play with lesser members, she's seen Gadget, and she said, oh, I know what it is to be a leader. So in a play group, you better not own a Maltese. You better not own a little Yorkie that squeaks. Because squeak toys to a terrier are nothing but game that isn't dead yet. You pick it up and shake it. The more they squeal, the more they shake.